How should you breathe when you lift weights? Watch this. Our next caller is Susanna from Maine. Hi, Susanna. How can we help you? Hi. Hi. Uh, well, I have a question. Um, I always learned that the breathing rule is to exhale on the exertion. Yeah. Inhale. Inhale as you're not exerting. And I recently at a personal trainer certification, the instructor said, that's not always the rule. And and when you're pulling something with, towards your torso, you want to inhale. Yeah. And then you would exhale the other way. And yeah. I, that just blew my mind. And I've tried it with lat pull downs. It, it feels really weird. Yeah. <laughs> but, and he said it had to do with shoulder external rotation. Yeah, he's right. Do you know why? Okay. Yeah, so, you know, when you do a row, how you want to expand your chest and stick your chest out, pull your shoulders back, it's hard to do while you yeah. breathe out. Mm -hmm. So breathing in brings the rib cage it's out expansive. and it gives you more space to get that scapular retraction. Now, here's the deal with breathing, okay? People overthink it. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like, this is yes. like, 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 look at get now you're like- and pass out. Yeah. yeah, like now you're like thinking about what you got to do. Like naturally what we do when we exert ourselves is we either hold our breath or we grunt, or we kind of like, right? So what's happening when we're breathing like that? We're breathing out, but we're doing it with a tense core, right? It's like, right? In martial art, martial artists Kiosk. or box boxers will talk about either a kiai or you hear boxers do that, you know, breathing type thing. They're breathing out with exertion while maintaining a tight core. The truth is, the only time I ever had to tell somebody to to change their breathing was the client that held their breath that just held their breath the whole time. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. oh you got to start breathing, right? So I, it's over. You're, you're I over used to have it. this spiel with yeah. my clients because this was this is such a common question. And when they, they'd ask me like, hey, well, I've heard this and I've heard that. And what are you supposed to do? I say, okay, you ready? Take notes. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Breathe. <laughs> just fucking breathe. Like literally just breathe. Like there's And the reason why I, I would say this to them is that, for example, there's going to be times when we're training over the course of this year when I'm going to ask you to do a 10-second negative. What are you going to do? Breathe in for 10 seconds? Yeah, you know. a, no, of course you're not. You're going to end up probably taking three or four breaths. And there's going to be other times when I want you to do something explosive, real like that. Yeah. And you're not going to breathe in and out in one second. Or, so, a, or a max. You're going to yeah. hold your breath. Yes. So, I think the, yeah, I think the only valuable thing to really um, focus on would be to, to be able to provide yourself with the type of like tensing core stability. So, yeah. like, so you know, if you to, to take time in learning that and, um, being able to, to to maintain a nice tight core while you're still able to like uh, inhale, get get adequate amount of oxygen and breath work, uh, but but still be able to maintain that tightness. I mean, that's that's really like the main thing, especially when you're loading a lot of weight in your back. No, that's a great point, Justin. And what he's explaining is your ability to draw your core in right and tighten up around that spine and brace while also I'm doing it right now, right? So I'm bracing my core, but I can still communicate, breathe, and talk. That's a good, that's an important technique to be able to do that. And that's where I want my clients. I want you to be able to brace that core tight while also still being able to breathe and talk. Yeah. That's way more important. Yeah. Susanna, how long have you been a trainer for? Oh, I, I, I barely, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even. <laughs> okay. You just getting started? <laughs> Winning, uh, I just getting started. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay, good. Yeah, so this, this seems like it's such an important topic. And you know, as I was playing with it, it was like, how, I didn't feel braced as I was inhaling and, and pulling. Yeah. Um, so that's, an, that's a, I guess, an art form. <laughs> it is. But so, so look, this is, I'm glad you're a new trainer. So I'm going to tell you something, okay? When you're mm. working on a client and you're training them and they have to focus on their posture and mm -hmm. the, the muscle control and form where they feel and something in technique and form, and then you're going to tell them to focus on breathing, that's an automatic thing, you're going to mess them up. Mm -hmm. This is a big mistake a lot of new trainers do is they tell their client to focus on 50 different things and the client's like, oh, I don't know what to do. Grip the floor with your toes, squeeze your glutes, make sure you breathe right here, look over there. Like, okay, this is, I, I even heard a trainer once tell a client, push the, your tongue to the roof of your mouth while you're doing this exercise is to activate some whatever muscle. And you could tell the client was just like, okay, I, I don't, under, like it's like trying to teach somebody how to throw a ball and you tell them 50 different things. Chew gum yeah. and like, yeah. Pat yeah. Yourself in the head. Don't worry about the breathing unless you notice like it's, it's an issue. Unless for they're them. not. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then when you do focus on breathing with them, just breathe with them. That's the only time I would work with a client on breathing is when we were practicing full diaphragmatic breathing. We weren't doing exercises. I had them on the back, on the floor, make your belly rise before your chest, get that full diaphragmatic breath in. That's all we're focusing on because breathing is such an automatic thing. That if you tell someone, like right now, 
If I tell you right now while we're talking to count how many times you blink your eyes, like look how self-conscious and weird you feel right now that you're thinking about blinking your eyes, something yeah. that's, that's automatic, right? So I wouldn't do that while they're exercising unless you notice it's an issue. I wouldn't even mention it. That's that because I come from a I'm a I'm a yoga instructor kind of moving into this new world, which is with amazing, fabulous new world. Uh, but but breath has always been numero uno. So yes, it's yeah. kind of. Well, uh, but, okay, one, so yeah. let's un let's unpack that for a minute. Yes. Right. When you're talking about yoga and I want to calm your central nervous system and relax Correct. and get in this yeah. med meditative state, mm -hmm. it does become very it's important. Yes. Part of it. It's very, it Huge. is, a, it, it is a major process of getting you to calm down, relax the central nervous system and get into those positions and to stretch and do that. When I'm mm -hmm. strength training, less important. Yeah. It is not, you yeah. don't, I don't want you relaxed. It's more bracing. Yeah, yeah. There's more bracing, bracing and, and you being intense. So it isn't on the, it isn't on a priority list. Now, yeah. does that mean there's not value in learning how to brace for like a one rep max and things like that? Yes. But the 99% of the clients you're going to be training, the number one thing you just need to look out for is them holding their yeah, breath. Yeah. Okay. So here's- People so will hold their breath. I'm That's so it. glad you said you're a yoga instructor because it is extremely important for yoga because you know that when you're in a position- and you're challenging your body's range of motion and you feel like you're tight and let's say you're in pigeon or something like that and your hip is stretching, our tendency is to hold our breath. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Now holding your breath actually tells your CNS to activate your muscles. So you can't relax. My, my hips can't relax as I'm holding my breath. In that case, you want to do what's the opposite of what feels natural, which is breathe through the pain. Now, if I'm trying to lift a weight and I'm trying to activate the muscles on my hip, then you let me go ahead and embrace and, 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 and do that with my breath. That naturally feels natural. I'm not trying to get you to relax your CNS in that particular case. So I think your practice with breathing is wonderful mm -hmm. and teach that to your clients through Great yoga positions. Recovery and parasympathetic. Yes, through yeah. yoga positions, through yeah. stretching, in between sets. I think that's phenomenal. In the sets, yeah. don't make it too much of a focus because it'll, it'll throw them off. All right. So great. That that's really that's that's so great advice. I'm I'm so excited that um that this question came up and that I've been exploring and that you guys are there. I'm really tickled to to be part of your show and Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Yeah, we appreciate yeah, your support. Yeah. I'm going to send you Maps Prime Pro cuz you're going to become a new trainer. I think that's a very valuable program for trainers. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm tickled. Thank you. You got it. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Right, thanks. I, you know what? I always forget when you talk to new trainers, the stuff that you th used to think was important. Yeah. You know? That's such a common one. Totally common. Oh, I, yeah. used, I, used, I used to love to just like do that well, to clients like that. It makes <laughs> it every, yeah, even more sense for coming from her yoga background. Because that like for, like she said, this is like the first focal point yep. uh, that, that you're trying to establish with people in the class. I, I remember specifically learning that in yoga class because I was in, I, I breathe for strength training, right? So I'm in a position, I'm holding a stretch. And yeah. I'm like doing yeah. what I naturally do, which is brace. Trying to push yeah. into it. And the instructor goes, when you do that, you're telling your CNS to stay tight. And I'm like, oh, oh you're right. So I started breathing relaxed and all of a sudden my muscles loosened up. Mm. Totally different. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And there's, I guarantee there's some trainers going to hear this and they're going to be like, oh, that is, oh, you barking and saying how important it can be. If I have a, if I'm learning or I'm teaching a client and we're like one rep max type bullshit, like we're, we're going to put a little more emphasis on the. You ain't doing that with a beginner though. Are yeah. You? No, yeah. you're not. I'm not one rep maxing with any of my clients. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so uh, it's not something I'm going to teach somebody like that. The at, like, And your point's perfect that. They have so much they have to think about. It's like a golf swing, right? Like mm -hmm. there's so many things that you're you're thinking about to just add another thing that really is not quite up there on the list, especially as long as they're doing it. If you are breathing and you're not holding your breath, you're fine. And you, and if somebody's lifting something heavy, they naturally will grunt. And what they're doing is they're breathing out with brace. That's what that's what that is right there. So by the way, for gyms who tell people not to grunt, it's like you're messing people up. 